Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for My Favorite Things, and in today's video, I'm going to create this winter scene using the Playful Penguins stamp set. I love when My Favorite Things comes out with penguin stamp sets because I am drawn to them every single time. They are such cute critters, easy to color, and they always have such fun sentiments. I'm going to start off by stamping down my images onto 80 pound smooth white cardstock. And since I haven't used this set yet, I'm going to condition my stamps by just inking them up with some Versamark ink. And then I'm going to wipe that off. Then I'm going to come in and ink them up with the My Favorite Things Extreme Black ink and stamp this down onto the cardstock. Now this is going to give me a really great impression, especially for stamping it for the first time. But since I have them in my MISTI, I'm going to go ahead and ink them up once again and get an even better impression. Now I'm ready to do some Copic coloring. I'm starting with this chunk of ice that I'm going to have one of the penguins laying on. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color with a BG11 and BG10. So I started off by really just outlining that top piece. And then for the side portion of it, I just kind of flicked up from the bottom and blending it out with the BG10. I'm going to use those same colors for my igloo. And I started off by just placing a line of color on those artist drawn lines. But then I went in and from each block, I flicked in a little bit just to add a little bit more color since I know igloos are white or kind of have that bluish tint from the snow. And so that's what I was kind of going for just so that they don't look so stark white on my card front. For the door, I did an E74 and E71. And then onto the bodies or the face and belly of the penguins, I am using some warm grays. So these have a really nice warm tone to them. I'm doing W2 and W0. Now for the most part, I'm going to leave a lot of white in their face and in their belly. I just really wanted to have a shadow area and then blend that shadow out. You probably could even get away with just using a W0 if you didn't want to have too much um, of that dark gray in there. And at this point, they probably kind of look a little dirty, but it'll all come together once I start adding color to the penguins. Now for the penguins, I think these are really cute because they can be done in a few different colors. I am using the BVs. So I started with a BV 25, 23, and 20. But after a while, I, I really personally like a lot of contrast when it comes to my images, which is why I end up using either a three color combo or a four color combo. So I colored this one in and when I started working on another penguin, I ended up coming in with a BV 29, which is pretty dark, but I think these penguins would look really cute if they were colored in like a blue, if you have like maybe B99 kind of up in that range. Um, also some purples I think would look really cute for these and even some maybe uh, light pinks. So I think these penguins have a lot of possibility when it comes to coloring them. I'll move on to the penguin that's kind of laying flat on the ground there. I think he's the cutest one out of this set. And just be mindful that there are feet in the back. So I did have to keep that in mind so I didn't end up coloring them um, this BV color. And I'm adding my shadows in and then just blending out with the lightest colors. So the highlight area for these two penguins here are going to be kind of in the center of their body. After I finished coloring this little guy in, I did go back up to the top. That one, I had to be careful because at this point, that top one has quite a bit of ink on there. And the more ink you're adding to your image, the more of a chance you have of bleeding outside of the line. But I did want to go back in and add that darkest color, that BV29, so that he matches the rest of the penguins. Next, I'll color in the beak and the feet. And I think this can go two ways as well. I went for kind of a yellow orange. So I have YR uh, 21 and 24, but I think you could go, you know, really high end on the orange or you could go all yellow. So I think this one has a little bit of wiggle room as well. I wanted to add a pop of color to these penguins and really any color would work, but I'm really drawn to red when it comes to penguins. So I am using an R17, 14 and R12. I do end up bringing in an R46 because like I said before, I really like my high contrast of the shadow and the light area. And that R12, it has so much 
uh, like that colorless blender in it that it really takes away from my color. So I didn't end up like liking using it on, on my coloring here too much. Um, and I did also though use that color for some little cheeks, give them some rosy cheeks. So I did my scarf and the earmuffs and then I'm working on the sweater. So they're going to both match. And this one too, I have the highlight kind of going down at the center of the penguin. And then I also added the dark color to underneath the arms. So the highlight will be on the top of the arms for this little guy. Once everything is all colored in, I am going to match up the coordinating dies to each of them, hold them in place with a low tack tape and die cut those out. So then I can move on to my background. I wanted to have a scene where I had some water on one side and then I had land on the other side so that each penguin kind of fit into the scene. And I decided to use the watercolor wash freeform stencil. That is going to look perfect for my little body of water. I used the penguin on that ice chunk as kind of a placeholder just to see where I wanted it to go. And I'm going to hold my cardstock down here with some low tack tape kind of taped behind it onto my work surface. And then I masked off the edges of the stencil. So now I'm bringing in some tumble glass uh, distress oxide ink and I'm going to use a blender brush to go around the outer edges of the stencil and on the card. I don't want to cover the whole thing. I just kind of want to blend it into the center and have it fade off. Now this is really fun. Take your blending brush and kind of flick it from the edge. This gives it such a neat look that really works with that little body of water. A blending brush really works nice for this technique because it has those soft bristles and you have more control over it versus a sponge and it just kind of has it fade off into the center. So I will remove my stencil and here we have this really cute little body of water and now I want to create my scene. So I straightened out my cardstock because it was crooked before but I want to use the grid lines on my mat. So I made sure my cardstock was straight. I am placing the mask over that watercolor wash area that I just ink blended and then I'm taking a piece of two inch post-it tape and I lined that up with the grid lines of my surface to create a straight line. So that way I have my sky, my land, and my water. Now I'm starting with that tumble glass again and blending from the post-it tape down onto the other area of my cardstock just to give a light hue of color. Now that ends up kind of disappearing because my background turns out so dark. So you could go back in and add some more color if you wanted to. For the background, I had just moved my post-it tape, so I masked off the bottom portion. I lined that up with that line that I had just created. And I'm starting with a salvaged patina distress ink. Now, I really have been enjoying using my distress inks more with a blending brush. I find that I have a lot more control. I'm not getting so many marks on my cardstock like I did before. So I started with just a uh, quick line of salvaged patina. I added in some salty ocean and then I'm going to come in from the top using blueprint sketch. Now I am using the same blending brush for all of these colors. If I need to switch in between, I just wipe it off on a paper towel. So I'm bringing that blueprint sketch down into the salty ocean and then I'm going to really amp it up with a chipped sapphire. So for chipped sapphire, I am going to start at the top and work my way down but I'm also going to kind of curve it around the edge of the cardstock. I had already planned on making this my full front of a cardstock and that I wasn't going to trim anything off. So I could kind of curve that around to highlight the center of my card. Now, once everything is all blended on and I'm happy with the background, I'm leaving everything in place and I'm going to take some water that I have in a Mr. Bottle, spritz it onto my fingertips and then flick this all over the background. So because I use the Distress inks, they react really well with water and I will just pick up that water with a paper towel. Now to add a little bit more interest and because this is kind of a winter scene, I am going to bring in this Copic white ink. I picked it up with my paintbrush and mixed it with some water, but you can use any type of white paint that you like to add splatters with. And then I'm just flicking this all over the background. I'll then carefully peel up my post-it tape and my mask and I am going to just kind of spot dry this real quick with my heat tool. But for the most part, I'm going to set it off on the side to let it air dry while I work on a sentiment. 
for the sentiment, I had really debated about what kind of cardstock I wanted to use for the front of the card. I think red would have tied in real nice with the outfits of my penguins and also stood out really nice against the blue background. But I decided to go for more of a tone on tone. So I have this really light blue cardstock that I lined up a sentiment on using my mini Misty tool. I prepped the cardstock with an anti static powder tool. And then I'm inking that up with a white pigment ink. I did already condition the stamp just like I did my penguins before. I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder. And then after the heat tool is warmed up, I'm going to go ahead and melt that embossing powder. I want to trim this down into a thin strip and I don't always remember where I put my dies to trim out sentiments. So a nice quick cheat way is I'm using my T-square ruler to measure out and put a little dot with a pencil so that my margins are even uh, above and below the sentiment. And then I trimmed that down with my paper trimmer and I can erase that pencil mark. I also trimmed out some scratch pieces of cardstock to fit behind my sentiment, layer them up with a liquid glue. You could also use foam squares here, but I really liked using cardstock to have nice complete coverage behind that sentiment. And then I can start building my scene. So the it glue is going to go the furthest in the back of the scene so that I applied just straight to the cardstock. The penguin on this kind of iceberg, this plate of ice, I glued the penguin to that so that it was kind of one piece. And then I went ahead and added foam squares behind all of my critters. After I remove the backing of the foam squares, I'm using my tweezers to just carefully place them into my scene. But my penguins were kind of almost floating in nothing. There was no other you know, definition to that background. So I took out that BG11 and I'm adding little flicks of color onto them to give them kind of a shadow of where they're standing, kind of grounding them to the background. I'm gonna then just trim off any excess that's hanging over the edge. And I felt like I was still kind of missing something. I really wanted some sparkle to go on this. So I'm taking my quickie glue pen and I'm just drawing along those lines on the igloo in the background. So that way I can add some glitter. I don't typically use glitter on my cards like this, but I thought I would give it a shot. I was inspired by a crafty friend recently, so I'm giving this Prisma glitter a shot. I'm also going to add it to this block of ice that my penguin is on. Now, when the glue goes on, it is blue, so you can see it really well. I'm sprinkling on the glitter and tapping off that excess onto some scratch paper. Now, because my background may still be a little wet, the glitter might stick to that, but after everything is dry, it's only gonna stick to the glue and you can brush away any excess that might be left behind. After I have all of that glitter added to the card front, that's going to finish it off and I'll add it to a card base. Now, I know in the picture here, that light blue with the white embossing might be kinda hard to see, but in person, it looks really neat. So I'm really happy I went with the light blue cardstock instead of the red. That finishes up my card project for you for today. I hope you enjoyed today's inspiration. Thanks so much for joining and I'll see you again soon.